recently presented a paper at the University of Aberdeen in Scotland. The title of the conference, Moving Forward, did not blend well with the title of my paper, We Are the Last Generation of Humans on Earth. In a nutshell, I argued that man has had four different types of jobs or activities since Mother Nature spawned him. For over 100,000 years, every able-bodied person on Earth worked as a hunter or gatherer. About 10,000 years ago, we discovered agriculture and husbandry, and gradually, more and more people in the world abandoned the spear for the plow. Then, about 200 years ago, some countries spearheaded the process of industrialization. Man was replaced by machine, and agriculture became much more efficient. Less than 50 years ago, as the advanced nations convert from manufacturing to services, underdeveloped parts of the world begin the process of urbanization and phase from agriculture into manufacturing and services. So here's the million dollar question. What other category can you imagine that comes after services? Where will billions of people be working next? If you cannot imagine a category, it means that you are proposing that humanity will be working in the service sector for the rest of eternity. You are suggesting that we worked as hunter-gatherers for over 100,000 years, as farmers for 10,000 years, as manufacturers for 200 years, and now we will work in the service sector for the next million years? Are you suggesting that we will merely be switching people from one subcategory of services to the next forevermore? Will we have more barbers and fewer firemen one year, and more bakers and fewer bankers the next? Some writers suggest that the next phase is the knowledge economy. The new commodity is information. The obvious reply is that information is a branch of services, just like growing carrots is a branch of agriculture, and making telephones is a branch of manufacturing. In fact, today, information is practically a synonym of services. There is hardly any activity in services which is not processed with computers and software. We are already in the knowledge economy. We are already in the age of information. Other authors propose that we will invent something new. Man always does. So let's repeat for those who didn't catch it the first time. Manufacturing has been steadily declining since World War II. Not a single invention since then has taken manufacturing to its former glory. The greatest invention in the last 100 years, the computer did not put people to work in manufacturing. Quite the contrary, it eliminated jobs in manufacturing as it allowed companies to automate their production lines. The labor force allocated to manufacturing has been consistently declining in spite of this technological breakthrough. The computer put people to work in services. As it turns out, we are also making services efficient day by day. As I speak, we are replacing check-in agents at the airports with check-in machines and bank tellers with automated tellers. The big retailer chains are substituting cashiers with self-checkout. To compound the problem, the population growth rate for the entire planet has been declining since 1963. This is good news for environmentalists and conservationists who claim that we are already too many. Pollution, they say, will now decrease and maybe we can still forestall climate change. But declining population is bad news for businessmen. Our artificial economy is founded on the principle of profit. The expectation of all corporations of the world is that tomorrow there will be more demand. And demand is ultimately dependent on the number of people. No people, no demand. The ideal situation for a company is to reduce costs to a minimum specifically by laying off workers. But the ideal demographic scenario for a corporation is to have unlimited exponential demand. Corporations would like nothing better than to have unlimited population growth. The United Nations statistics instead show that the population is on its way down. Therefore, not only agriculture and manufacturing are becoming more efficient and shedding workers, but services as well. The demographic decline only exacerbates an already untenable situation. There is in fact a category beyond services, and it is the fastest growing segment of the global economy. It is called unemployment. 
As we trim labor to make agriculture, manufacturing, and services more efficient, we will inevitably be fueling unemployment. There is no other line item in the economy that you can imagine where billions of people can be put to work in next. However, this trend is unsustainable. You cannot continuously decrease the number of employed people and hope to support an ever-increasing number of unemployed. The rise in unemployment that you read about in the news today is not a typical dip in the business cycle. It is a structural part of the long-term linear economic trend. The day our global economic system collapses, the agricultural corporations will have no further incentive to grow crops, process foods, or deliver these goods to your local supermarket. On that day, you are on your own, left with whatever food you manage to store in your home. If you haven't prepared to sow seeds and grow your own crop under a subsistence regime after most people are gone, you will not survive either. So how many years do you think we will spend in this cutting-edge unemployment category? If the exponential trends just discussed have any validity, it doesn't seem like we have very long to go before unemployment breaks the economy. We spent more than 100,000 years as hunter-gatherers, 10,000 years as farmers, 200 years as manufacturers, and 30 years as service providers. What do we have left? Five or ten years until unemployment overflows capacity and destroys what remains of man's artificial economy? Mm -hmm.